In the previous video, we discussed the influence of the quantity and quality of rice grains on the potential harvest of our rice plants. So, in this video, we'll take a step back and explain how the number of rice tillers per hill impacts the potential harvest obtained by rice farmers. Does the quantity of rice tillers really have a significant effect on increasing the quality of the harvest? Or is this just a testimonial from agricultural product producers to ensure their products sell well in the market? Let's break it down here. Tillering is one of the most crucial phases of vegetative growth in rice plants. The process of tillering, which is the lateral branching of the main stem nodes, primary tillers, and secondary tillers, fundamentally determines the architecture of the plant canopy, which ultimately has a significant impact on yield potential. Rice yield potential is determined by four main yield components, the number of panicles per unit area, strongly influenced by productive tillers, the number of grains per panicle, the percentage of filled grains, and the weight of 1,000 grains. Therefore, the dynamics of effective tillering and development are crucial for achieving optimal grain production. Theoretically, the greater the number of tillers, the greater the potential number of panicles that will form, which is positively correlated with increased yield. Various scientific studies have shown that the maximum tiller number is a key variable explaining yield. A strong, positive correlation has been found between tillering rate and yield, indicating that a higher tiller number generally accompanies increased grain yield and biomass accumulation. This is because tillers contribute significantly to the plant's total photosynthetic capacity, allowing for greater light energy capture, which in turn promotes carbohydrate production, biomass accumulation, and improved grain filling. However, the relationship between tillering and yield is not a simple linear relationship. Tiller quality, not just quantity, plays a crucial role. Only productive tillers, tillers that successfully produce panicles, contribute to yield. Studies have shown that early emerging tillers, such as the main stem, MN, and early forming primary tillers, T1, consistently produce higher yields than late emerging tillers. Late emerging tillers often contribute significantly less to total yield due to several factors, including, 1. Resource competition, late emerging tillers face greater competition for light, water, and nutrients from the main stem and older tillers. 2. Grain filling efficiency, late emerging tillers have less time to transport nutrients to the grain and exhibit lower activity of enzymes related to grain filling, resulting in a lower number of grains per panicle and a lower percentage of filled grains. 3. Panicle quality, panicles on late emerging tillers tend to be smaller and have less filled grains. Therefore, a cultivation strategy aimed at optimizing productive early tillers is key. Ineffective management of tiller dynamics, such as excessive tillering, can lead to losses. Too many tillers can trigger tiller abortion, the death of tillers before they produce panicles, overcrowding the plant canopy, increasing humidity that favors pest and disease development, and producing small panicles with poor grain fill percentages. Conversely, too few tillers will result in suboptimal panicle density, which will certainly reduce overall yield potential. A balanced allocation of resources among tillers is crucial to maximize yields. Factors such as variety, plant spacing, seedling age at transplanting, nitrogen fertilizer application, and environmental conditions, e.g., light intensity, salinity stress, and water logging, have been shown to influence tillering dynamics and the proportion of productive tillers. Varieties with high tillering capacity are predicted to have higher productivity. Wider plant spacing allows for optimal tiller development, especially in fertile soils. Nitrogen fertilizer application is known to increase tiller number, but can also increase heterogeneity in tiller yield. 
Optimized nitrogen dosage has been shown to increase rice yield by improving tiller quality, such as increasing the percentage of tillers with grains and the number of grains per panicle. Younger seedlings at transplanting, although initially producing slower tillers, can eventually achieve comparable tiller numbers and have the potential to produce high-yielding yields. Environmental stresses, such as salinity or waterlogging, especially during the early growth phase, tilling to panicle initiation, can significantly reduce tiller number and ultimately reduce yield. Scientific evidence confirms that tillering is a key determinant of rice yield potential as it determines panicle density. Increasing yields requires careful cultivation management to promote effective and productive tillering, especially early tillering, while preventing excessive tillering that is unproductive and only becomes a burden on assimilates, wasting energy. Plant breeding is also currently focusing on identifying genes such as more panicles 3 that can increase tillering while maintaining or improving other yield components. Tiller optimization is an important strategy towards sustainable rice productivity improvement. 1. Tiller number regulation. Nitrogen fertilizer application is the most common and effective method for increasing the tiller population in rice. The effect of nitrogen on tillering occurs through physiological and biochemical mechanisms. Shoot hormone, adequate nitrogen application increases the cytokine in hormone content in stem nodes, which functions to break the dormancy of tiller buds and promote their germination. Thus, Nitrogen effectively promotes tiller initiation and development. Vegetative growth, nitrogen is a major constituent of proteins, amino acids, and nucleic acids, which are essential for protein biosynthesis and cell growth. Adequate nitrogen availability will result in lush, dark green vegetative growth, increased leaf surface area, and, in turn, increased photosynthesis rates, which support energy for tiller formation. Increased maximum tillering, in general, increasing nitrogen doses will result in a higher maximum total tiller number per hill, which lays the foundation for panicle formation. 2. Tiller quality and productive tillers. While nitrogen increases tiller number, its impact on tiller quality, namely the proportion of tillers that successfully become productive tillers, forming panicles and grains, is more crucial. A yield heterogeneity. Nitrogen application, especially at high doses, often increases tiller yield heterogeneity. This means that not all tillers contribute equally to the final yield. Early emerging tillers, main stem and early primary tillers, contribute significantly more to yield than late emerging tillers. Bead resource deficiency in inferior tillers. Under high nitrogen conditions, most nutrients and assimilates, carbohydrates produced by photosynthesis, tend to be retained in the straw, stem, of late emerging tillers. Although these tillers have high transport efficiency in their vascular bundles, they have a shorter time to mobilize nutrients to the grain. As a result, they have a significantly lower number of grains per panicle and grain fill percentage, thus contributing minimally to yield. The conclusion is as follows. Optimized nitrogen application has been shown to increase rice yields by improving tiller quality, specifically increasing the percentage of tillers with grains and the number of grains per panicle, while reducing ineffective tillers. Overall, nitrogen is key to unlocking tiller potential. However, the positive correlation between nitrogen and yield only holds up to the optimal dose. Improper nitrogen management, whether in excess or insufficient, will reduce the efficiency of nitrogen use by the plant and ultimately limit the potential yield.